series on differential equations. Today top, today's topic is solution of homogeneous and non-homogeneous second order partial differential equations. We have learned in partial differential equations, the second order partial differential equations, the method of characteristics changing the normal form and we have done one dimensional wave equation. All these things we had learned for homogeneous equation, today we will move to non-homogeneous equation as well. In today's lecture, we will cover the three things, one dimensional non-homogeneous wave equation, two dimensional homogeneous Laplace equation and two dimensional non-homogeneous Poisson equation. Poisson equation is actually the non-homogeneous form of Laplace equation. So, let us start with the one dimensional wave equation with non-homogeneous that is the right hand side is not 0. So, one dimensional wave equation we had learned that it is del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 that was homogeneous one. Now, we are having on the right hand side h x t a function of x and t. In the whole reason defined on the whole real line that is minus infinity to plus infinity and t positive. The initial conditions we do have that u x at 0 is 0 and del u over del t at t is equal to 0 is 0. That is initially at the time t is equal to 0, the uh, uh, function unknown function u is 0 and the derivative uh, with respect to t at t is equal to 0 is also 0. What we if you do remember we have done the uh, this uh, homogeneous uh, wave equation with initial conditions where we had that initially the deflection was f x and initially the velocity was g x. Now, because we are talking about here this non-homogeneous equation, we are using first this homogeneous initial conditions. Now, the way how do we solve this equation? If you remember in the ordinary differential equations when we are talking about the non-homogeneous equations, we first find out the general solution from the homogeneous equation and for the non-homogeneous equation we used one particular solution and then using the superposition principle we add up the, both the solutions we get the solution of non-homogeneous equation that is the method here also. But let us try one more method which is based on the Duhamel's principle. What is that? It actually does is that it reduces this non-homogeneous problem to a special homogeneous problem with non-homogeneous initial conditions. See, the non-homogeneous problem is del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to h x t in the reason x belonging to r and t positive. And the initial conditions we are homogeneous conditions that is u x comma 0 is 0 and del u over del t at t is equal to 0 is 0. Now, we change reduce it to a special homogeneous problem with non-homogeneous initial condition. What is that a special homogeneous problem? We take del 2 u that is now I am taking another function capital U. Del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 that is the equation we have we said is that a equation in unknown function capital U. This is homogeneous wave equation in the whole reason uh, x uh, in the minus infinity to plus infinity and t positive. And the initial conditions we are having is the first u x comma 0 comma s is equal to 0 and derivative of u x comma t comma s with respect to t at t is equal to 0 is h x comma s for all x belonging to r. And we say that if this is special homogeneous problem initial value problem here we do have del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0. This is homogeneous equation. Now, what we are taking this function capital U is in the three variables now x, t and s. And if we can solve this and here the second initial condition about the velocity is h x comma s where you, you do see is that is we do have is initially that problem in the non-homogeneous problem this was the right hand side function of my non-homogeneous 
wave equation. So, which we are having is x comma s. Now, if this problem can be solved, so now this is actually homogeneous one with non-homogeneous initial conditions of course, we do know. So, if this a special homogeneous problem does has a solution for each parameter s. Now, s is the parameter here we had made. If it is can be solved for each parameter s, then Dohmel's principle says we can find out the solution of this which can be related with the solution of this. Now, let us see what is the Dohmel's principle says. Dohmel's principle says if the solution of the special homogeneous problem u x comma t comma s is twice differentiable and continuous in x and t that is the function u x t comma s which is in the 3 variable is continuous with respect to x and t and it is twice differentiable that is it has the uh, second derivative with respect to x as well as with respect to t and continuous in s. Then the solution of homogeneous a non homogeneous problem that is u x t can be given as integral 0 to t capital U x comma t minus s comma s d s this is the solution of non homogeneous problem. So, what we are doing is we are changing our non homogeneous problem that is non homogeneous wave equation with homogeneous initial conditions we are changing it to a special homogeneous uh, equation to with non homogeneous initial conditions that we do know how to solve that we are doing is with one parameter s as well. And then with that parameter s we are integrating it and we are saying is that this is the solution of this let us see that is whether it is solution of our non homogeneous problem. Let us prove this principle. we are saying is that capital U is the solution of this problem u x t we are saying is that this should be this one. Now, let us try to see that can we satisfy this is satisfying the our non homogeneous equation or not. So, first find out its derivative with respect to t. Now, when we are finding out the derivative of this is small u x comma t with respect to t, we see that u x t is actually integral of from 0 to t capital U x t minus s s d s. That is we are having a function which is depending on t as well as the limit is also depending on t. We want the derivative of this integral. We have already done in first course this kind of integral this kind of differentiation under the integral sign where the limit is itself a function of the variable. So, using that one we do have it it is u x comma 0 comma t plus integral 0 to t the partial derivative of this function with respect to t that is u t we are writing that is the partial derivative with respect to t of this function x t minus s is integrated with respect to s. Now, my initial condition says u x comma 0 comma s is 0 for all s. So, when I am keeping is here s as t this u x comma 0 comma t this would be actually 0. So, what I would get is that first partial derivative of u x t is integral 0 to t the partial derivative of u capital U x t minus s comma s with integrated with respect to s. Similarly, I go again to find out the second derivative that is again differentiate this function with respect to t again we will use the same formula. So, what we would get u t x comma 0 comma t plus integral 0 to t u t t because now I want the partial derivative of this function with respect to t again that is it is second partial derivative with respect to t that is it is del 2 u over del t t with of course, that uh, arguments if the function is of x t minus s s integrated with respect to s. Now, this second condition is about the second initial condition is del u over del t of this function at t is equal to 0 is h x comma s. So, that will substitute over here. So, what we get the second derivative partial derivative with respect to t of u x t is h x comma t plus 0 to t 
second derivative u t t of x comma t minus s comma s integrated with respect to s. Similarly, we can find out for this the derivative with respect to x. Now, when we will find out the derivative with respect to x, then this integral does have the fixed limit that is then the limits are not variable. Again using that formula for the differentiation under the integral sign doubles uh, two times we would be using that is twice differentiable. We do get the second derivative of u x comma t is integral 0 to t second derivative partial derivative with respect to x of capital U the function is of x comma t minus s comma s integrate it with respect to s in the whole range 0 to t. Now, substitute this u t t and u x x in our non homogeneous equation. Our equation is del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2. So, if I substitute it here what I do get the first second derivative with respect to t we have got h x comma t plus integral 0 to t u t t x comma t minus s s d s minus c square times second derivative with respect to x that is from here integral 0 to t u x x x comma t minus s comma s d s. Now, rearrange these terms what I do get h x t as such plus these two integrals we could write it out as the u t t x t minus s comma s minus u t t x comma t minus s comma s d s. Now, if we see capital U is the solution of our homogeneous problem or homogeneous equation. Homogeneous equation was sorry here it has to be c square or also the c square is also going to come over here. So, this uh, c square u x x that would be now a special homogeneous problem which says is del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is 0. Since capital U is satisfying that equation that means this equation must be 0. Hence, what we do get is this is nothing but h x t that is it is satisfying our non homogeneous wave equation that says is u x comma t integral 0 to t capital U x comma t minus s comma s integrated with respect to s is a solution of non homogeneous condition uh, non homogeneous wave equation. Moreover, it is going to satisfy our initial conditions as well. Now, how to find out the complete solution? To find out the solution of uh, that special homogeneous problem, we will try to use the D L Lambert solution, because that is only initial value problem and only initial value problem when we are talking about, we do find out that D L Lambert solution is more nice and more Mm, uh, uh, elegant way of to finding out the solution. So, we do have this problem homogeneous uh, wave equation del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 and initial condition u x comma 0 comma s is 0 and u t x comma 0 comma s is h x s for all x belonging to r and this equation is on the whole real line with t positive. So, if we, I compare it by uh, usual that is what we have already done, there we had this our wave equation del, uh, del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 and the initial conditions were u x comma 0 is equal to f x and del u over del t t comma 0 is equal to g x. Now, if I compare my wave equation is all right the same similar kind of things. Uh, the only thing is that here we are having capital U, here we are having a small u. If I compare the initial condition, my f x is coming as 0 and this uh, uh, second initial condition g x is h x comma s. So, what we will do get the solution for this the solution was if you do remember we have done that u x comma t the solution of this initial problem was initial value problem was half times f of x minus c t plus half of plus f of x plus c t plus 1 by 2 c integral minus x minus c t to x plus c t z xi d xi where g x was the second initial condition initial velocity. Now, if I compare it my f is 0 here and g x here is h x s. So,
So, what we do get the solution capital U x t comma s as 1 upon 2 c integral x minus c t to x plus c t x j comma s d z. So, this is the solution of my special homogeneous problem. So, what will be the non homogeneous uh, problem solution initial value problem solution that we can find it out using our Domino's principle which says is that it should be integrated around. So, we do get is integrate this whole thing from 0 to t with respect to s. So, this 1 upon 2 c is constant that I have taken out integral 0 to t integral of now the function has to be u x t minus if you do remember. So, here t minus s if I am writing here that is at the place of t I have to replace it by t minus s. So, what I am getting is the limits as x minus c times t minus s to x plus c times t minus s and the integrand is s i s d i and this whole thing whatever this integral we are getting that we have to integrate with respect to s. So, this is what is the solution of our non homogeneous wave equation with homogeneous initial conditions. Now, if I do have a problem in which I do have non homogeneous initial conditions, what we do use is since we had find out the solution with respect to the homogeneous initial conditions, we do know that in the similar manner we can find out the solution for the non homogeneous initial conditions. How we could do is before that let us see we say is that is this solution would be existing if my non this right hand side function h x t is continuous and differentiable in x and continuous in t then this u x t is solution of our non homogeneous initial value problem that is what the condition we do require is only that these integrals must exist for integrals to be existing I do require that this integral that is this function must be continuous and since we are using double integral and partial derivative with respect to t we do require that is it should be x and t that is it, it just requires that with respect to x it should be differentiable and with respect to t it should be only continuous. Now, if I do have this non homogeneous wave equation del 2 u over del t 2 minus c square del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to h x comma t and non homogeneous initial conditions as well that u x comma 0 is equal to f x and u t x comma 0 is equal to g x. Then we can find out the solution first what we do is we take the homogeneous initial conditions and then take this then we can change it to the special homogeneous uh, problem with non homogeneous initial conditions. In that non homogeneous initial conditions we can fix up these non homogeneous initial conditions of here from here itself and then we can find out the solution of homogeneous wave equation with initial conditions as non homogeneous. We can get it using the D L Lambert's formula and then we can use the principle this Donald's principle for finding out the solution of this non homogeneous equation and that we can add it up that is what it simply says is whenever we do have non homogeneous problem the basic method says is we convert it to the homogeneous that is we just simply put right hand side 0 and solve it that gives me solution of homogeneous one and for non homogeneous one we find out a particular solution and that we add and that we can do using the superposition principle. It says the superposition principle is as self for the homogeneous ones, but that actually makes is that if it is non homogeneous and we are adding the homogeneous solution solution of homogeneous equation and, non, and particular solution of non homogeneous equation we are getting the solution of non homogeneous equation. That principle can be extended with the initial conditions as well that is if the initial conditions are homogeneous or non homogeneous we can still change it that is we can use it we can change this initial conditions to homogeneous that is we write the right hand side as 0 and then if we can find out the solution of this non homogeneous and we can add it up and that will give me the solution with this initial conditions non homogeneous initial conditions. So, that principle we would be using here 
what it says is for this we can use the solution as because uh, for non homogeneous conditions uh, the d l Lambert solution for the homogeneous wave equation is half of f x minus c t plus f of x plus c t plus 1 upon 2 c integral x minus c t to x plus c t d z xi d xi where my f is this initial condition and j is the function dependence giving the second initial condition. Then we just add up the solution of this non homogeneous problem which we just have find out using the Demers principle which says is it should be 1 upon 2 c integral 0 to t of integral x minus c minus c times t minus s to x plus c times t minus s h xi s d xi and whole integrate with respect to s. Now, let us uh, do again the solution would exist if I do have that my the function f g and h are continuous and differentiable that is my function u x t should be continuous and twice differentiable. So, that it is it can satisfy these equations. Let us do one example solve the initial value problem del 2 u over del t 2 minus 4 times del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 2 t with non homogeneous initial conditions u x comma 0 is equal to x square and u t x comma 0 is 1. Now, what we do is first we will solve the homogeneous equation with these non homogeneous initial conditions using the d l Lambert's principle and then using the d this uh, Duhamel's principle we would write the solution of this non homogeneous equation with homogeneous initial conditions and that would give me the solution of the whole problem by adding up. So, we are being given here right hand side that we have denoted h x comma t that is 2 t and initial condition we had used that u x comma 0 should be f x. So, f x here is x square and u t x comma 0 is 1. So, g x is 1 moreover in this initial condition if we, uh, there in the wave equation here we used to have c square. So, c we could say is 2 because in solutions we are having is x plus c t and x minus c t kind of thing. So, c is 2 here. Now, let us first get the d l Lambert solution for the homogeneous problem with the so, corresponding special homogeneous problem del 2 u over del t 2 minus 4 del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 with u x comma 0 comma s is equal to x square and u t x comma 0 comma s is equal to 2 s. So, now what we have done is we have changed our non homogeneous problem to the homogeneous problem with non homogeneous condition after the initial conditions itself are non homogeneous. So, we have done it the only thing what we have changed is that is rather than using that the g x I am using here is 2 s. So, using it d l Lambert solution if we do go ahead what we will do is we will first find out the characteristics of this equation and then change the transform it and do it. So, characteristics for this here b square is 0 b is 0 a is minus 4 and c is 1. So, we would be getting is elliptic one d t by d x we would be getting is b square minus 4 a c is plus minus 4 by 8 that is 1 by 2. So, characteristic curve we would get 2 t is equal to x plus c 1 and 2 t is equal to minus x plus c 2. From here we can transform it using the transformation v as x minus 2 t and z as x plus 2 t we are changing it to the canonical form. So, for this we do know that del v over del x would be 1, del v over del t is equal to minus 2, del z over del x would be 1, del z by del t would be 2. Using this uh, chain rule del u over del x we could write del u over del v times del v over del x plus del u over del z times del z over del x just putting del v over del x as 1 and del z over del x is equal to 1 we get it is del u over del v plus del u over del z. Again the second derivative simply says is that differentiate this with respect to x again. Again we would use the chain rule that is del upon del v of this whole function del u upon del v plus del u upon del z times del v over del x plus derivative with respect to z of this whole function del u upon del v plus del u upon del z times d del z over del x. Now, again del v over del x and del z over del x we are 
nothing but the 1. So, we would get it as del 2 u over del v 2 plus 2 times del 2 u over del v del z plus del 2 u over del z 2. Since, we had assumed that our x uh, function u is continuous in x and t that guarantees that we can uh, get that del 2 u over del v over del z or del 2 u over del z del v that would be same. Similarly, we can go ahead with the derivative with respect to t again using the chain rule in the similar manner first differentiating with respect to v then derivative of with respect to t and then differentiating with respect to z and the derivative of z with respect to t. So, d v over d t here is minus 2 and del v over del z, uh, del z over del t is plus 2 we do get is minus 2 times del u over del v minus del u over del z. Again use the second derivative that is again differentiated with respect to t we do get it should be 4 times del 2 u over del v 2 minus 2 times del 2 u over del v del z plus del 2 u over del z 2. Now, substitute this in our given equation. So, we do get the canonical form of del 2 u over del t 2 minus 4 times del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 in this we are going to substitute. Now, the derivative with respect to v and z. So, we are getting is 4 times del 2 u over del v 2 plus 2 times del 2 u over del v del z plus del 2 u over del z 2 that is actually the derivative of del 2 u over del x 2. So, this I am keeping over this, this should be equal to 4 times del 2 u over del v 2 minus 2 times del 2 u over del v del z plus del 2 u over del z 2. Now, if we just uh, simplify it, we do get is that del 2 u over del v del z z is equal to 0, that is it has been changed, this has changed to the canonical form, we do get very easily that is the terms involving the second derivative with respect to v and second derivative with respect to z they are equal on both the sides. So, they would be cancelling it out. Now, this equation we can solve by first differentiating with respect to z and then differentiating with respect to v. So, integrating with respect to z first we do get del u over del v as phi of v. Why? Because this is 0. So, we will get the constant with respect to z, but that may contain a function of v because it is the partial derivative with respect to z. Again integrating it with respect to v, we do get u as integral of phi v dv plus a constant, constant may involve the function uh, involve the variable z. So, let us write that is a function of psi z. This we have already done, this is again just for you could, you could say is your practice that is how we are using this uh, d l numbers and this canonical form to solve the equations. Since this integral would be only a function of v, let me write it out another phi. So, phi of v plus psi of z. Now, change back it to in x and t. So, what we have got u x comma t comma s as phi of x minus 2 t plus psi of x plus 2 t. Now, what would be this phi and psi? For that, we require to determine this phi and psi which are unknown functions, general functions. We use the initial conditions. Our initial conditions are been given as u as x comma 0 comma s as x square and u t x comma 0 comma s as 2 s. So, u x comma 0 comma s as phi x plus psi x is equal to x square and the derivative of this u x t s that would be minus 2 phi dash x minus 2 t plus 2 times psi dash x plus 2 t where this dash means the derivative with respect to this evaluated at t is equal to 0 this is given as 1. Yeah, g x was given as 1. So, here it should be 1. When we are keeping it over here, we do get it as phi x minus psi x is equal to k x naught plus half integral x naught to x 1 with respect to xi that is d xi, z xi, d xi. So, now we have got one equation over here involving phi and psi and another involving phi and psi. From these two ones, we do get the solution and k x naught is of course, a constant when we are integrating it with respect to x. We are getting is 2 phi x is equal to f x minus k x naught minus half x naught 2 x d s 2 psi x is equal to f x plus k x naught plus half x naught 2 x d z. So, this you this uh, s we are just uh, taking out uh, rather than we are using xi because this s may should not con uh, confuse with our parameter s. So, what we get the solution is 
u x comma t comma s as phi of x minus 2 t plus psi of x plus 2 t. Now, replace phi and psi in the terms of u and f and g, we do get half of x minus 2 t square minus half of k x naught minus 1 by 4 x naught to x minus 2 t d psi and psi x plus 2 t is half of x plus 2 t square plus half of k x naught plus 1 by 4 times x naught to x minus 2 t d psi. Now, add it up what we do get it x square plus 4 t square it should be 2 t square x square plus 2 t square no sorry x is x minus 2 t whole square and x plus 2 t whole square. So, it should be x square plus 4 t square and this k this constant would be cancelling out because the same constant on both this one and this integral that is from x naught to x minus 2 t and minus sign I could write it as x minus 2 t to x naught. So, we do get finally, the integral 1 by 4 times integral x minus 2 t to x plus 2 t d psi. Now, evaluate this integral. This integral d psi that we would get psi, psi is evaluated from x minus 2 t to x plus 2 t. What we would get 1 by 4 x plus 2 t minus x minus 2 t, we add it up we just get it only t. So, we have got the solution u x comma t comma s as x square plus 4 t square plus t. Now, we just go with the uh, solution of non homogeneous problem using the Dirmal's principle, which says is that it should be 1 upon 2 c 0 to t integral x minus c min times t minus s to x plus c times t minus s h i s d i d s. Now, h i s is nothing but 2 s. So, we get it as 2 s integral from x minus c times 2 mi t minus s with respect to xi. So, that is we are not having any function of xi over there. So, I would get simply 2 s and then x plus c t, c t minus c s minus x minus c t plus c s and that would give me only c times t minus s twice c times t minus s. Twice c that would be getting cancelled out what we would be left is 2 times 2 s is there. So, 2 s multiplied with t minus s. So, integral 2 I have taken outside integral 0 to t s times t minus s that is t s minus s square integrated with respect to s. Now, integrate it here we have to integrate it with respect to s. So, it this will give me s square by 2 t times s square by 2 evaluated from 0 to t I would get t times t square by 2 and this 2 is getting cancelled out. So, I would get t cube. Similarly, this one minus 2 s square you could say s square does has integral would be s cube by 3 evaluated from 0 to t I would get t cube by 3. So, what we have got t cube minus 2 t cube by 3 that gives me t cube by 3. So, this is what we have got the solution of this special homogeneous this non homogeneous problem with homogeneous initial condition and the previously we had find out the solution of homogeneous problem with non homogeneous initial conditions. So, we just add up these two solutions we do get the final solution of our problem initial value problem as x square plus 4 is 4 t square plus t plus t cube by 3. Now, let us see that is whether it is a solution of our given equation or not you can just find out its derivatives with respect to t and with respect to x second derivatives try to put if I am finding out the second derivative with respect to x over here I would get it simply 2. And if I find out the second derivative with respect to t you can just get it out that is here I would be getting it 8 and this would be 0 and this would be uh, first derivative would be 3. Uh, t square that is uh, t square then we would get 2 t. So, uh, we do get is that is when we are 
keeping it in our equation, we can get that it is satisfying our solution, uh, our equation, we would be getting it equal to 2 t. And when does it satisfy our initial conditions? Let us see is that is the, uh, the derivative of this with respect to t is 8 t plus 1 plus t square. So, from here actually you can see is that the second derivative would be 8 plus 2 t. So, you can just get it that is 8 minus uh, 8 plus 2 t that is you would get the solution as 2 t. So, now initial conditions are at t is equal to 0 the function should be x square. So, here if I put t is equal to 0 all these terms would be 0 I would get only x square and u t at t is equal to 0 is given as 1. So, if I keep t is equal to 0 put t is equal to 0 over here I would get only 1 that is satisfying our equation as well it is satisfying the initial condition. So, this is the solution. Now, let us come to another problem solve the initial boundary value problem del 2 u over del t 2 minus del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 1 with initial conditions u x comma 0 is 0 and u t x comma 0 is 0 and boundary conditions u comma u 0 comma t is 0 u l comma t is minus l, by l square by 2 where this equation is for x 0 to l and t is positive. So, you do remember that is if we are having is that our bound is being fixed in 0 to l that we are getting is this boundary condition and this initial condition. So, now we are having actually non homogeneous equation homogeneous initial conditions, but with boundary conditions how to solve this one. We can solve uh, this kind of equations using uh, just take this uh, non homogeneous uh, equation we just take the homogeneous part use this boundary conditions and use the Fourier series method. So, what we do is now we will go with the method which says is that find out a particular solution and find the general solution for the homogeneous one. So, what we do is that is we take one particular solution of this non homogeneous problem and the boundary value problem we then will treat with this homogeneous equation with these boundary conditions the boundary value problem find out the solution using the Fourier series method and then satisfy the initial and then put that uh, our uh, particular problem over there and find out the uh, using this initial condition find out the solution. So, let us do that is how we are going to do it. So, first this particular solution let I, I am taking it here in general let us say that particular solution be u p x comma t first. Then solve the boundary value problem del 2 u over del t 2 minus del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 0 with boundary conditions u 0 comma t is equal to 0 and u l comma t is equal to minus l square by 2. In last lectures we have done that is how to solve this uh, one dimensional wave equations with boundary conditions using the Fourier method using that variable separable method the this one. So, we have got this using this uh, product method and superposition principle if you do remember we had got that the now I will call this uh, solution of this as homogeneous that u h x comma t that we have got as summation n is running from 1 to infinity a n cos n pi t over l plus a n star sin n pi t over l sin n pi x over l. Now, if I just use the uh, our this uh, solution u p x comma t as the particular solution of our non homogeneous uh, equation, then the solution of non homogeneous boundary value problem would be u x comma t summation n is running from 1 to infinity a n cos n pi t over l plus a n star sin n pi t over l into sin n pi x over l u p x comma t. You do remember that there we are having c also here c is 1. So, this c would be 1. Now, we try to satisfy the initial conditions over here. Initial condition says is at t is equal to 0 this function should be 0 and the derivative of this function at t is equal to 0 with respect to t the derivative with respect to t at t is equal to 0 should also be 0. So, let us try to satisfy these initial conditions they says that is 1 when I am putting t is equal to 0 
this cos 0 is 1 and sin 0 is 0. So, I would be getting only from here the only term a n and sin n pi x over l. So, what we would be getting is summation n is running from n to uh, 1 to infinity a n times sin n pi x over l plus u p x comma t that should be 0 that I am putting on the right hand side. So, it will satisfy initial conditions that is if I find out this a n such that this is happening. Now, what does it says is that I should take my whatever be that particular solution that particular solution at t is equal to 0 whatever we are getting my a n should be actually the uh, coefficients of for your sin series of that function. And similarly, when I take the derivative with respect to t here I would be getting is minus n pi over l a n times sin n pi t over l and plus n pi over l a n star sin n pi t over l that says is that uh, n pi over l would also come over here that a n star times n pi over l sin n pi x over l should be equal to the derivative of this partial this uh, particular solution with respect to t at t is equal to 0. So, what it says is that I should get the solution um, uh, as using the Fourier series I could get that is whatever this particular solution I do have that evaluated at t is equal to 0 what function I do get that should be a function of x we do get it in the terms of the Fourier series and similarly we should get over here in the a n stars we could get from the other initial condition. Now, let us do one example suppose in this particular one I do take my particular solution as x square plus 3 by 2 t square. Now, this would satisfy our equation because our equation says is del 2 u over del x 2 minus del 2 u over del uh, or del 2 u over del t 2 minus del 2 u over del x 2 is equal to 1. So, the second derivative with respect to t will give me here only uh, 3 by 2 is uh, into t is that is 3 and uh, second derivative with respect to x will give me 2 only. So, 3 minus 2 would be 1. So, this is actually a solution of our non homogeneous differential partial differential equation uh, satisfying that one. So, this is a particular solution. Now, in this particular solution if I put t is equal to 0 what I do say get is that a n I should get as the Fourier uh, coefficient of Fourier sin series of minus x square. If I take this uh, derivative with respect to t I would get it as 3 t and at t is equal to 0 that would be 0 that says is a n stars I would be getting it uh, actually n pi over l times a n star would be 0 or a n stars would be 0. So, what would be getting the solution we would be getting the solution as summation n is running from 1 to infinity a n cos n pi t over l times sin n pi x over l plus x square plus 3 by 2 t square where a n s are been given as the Fourier coefficients of the Fourier sin series of minus x square that is a n should be integral 0 to l minus x square sin n pi x over l dx. So, that is how we are solving this boundary value problem also as one example. Let us move to one more practical problem which says is that in heat conditions we have already done this uh, um, heat equations that is uh, this equation which we call the Laplace equation del 2 u over del x 2 plus del 2 u over del y 2 is equal to 0 this we have uh, turned around in the first lecture and second lecture we had already find it out that this is an elliptic equation it is not having any characteristic. Moreover we are knowing is that this is not well posed Cauchy problem is not well posed that says is if I use any initial conditions or boundary conditions then on any characteristic curves it is not necessary that that give me a unique solution that is it is not the Cauchy problem for such equations is not well posed. An important application of uh, this is coming from the steady state uh, uh, two dimensional heat flow that is heat equation two dime this is a two dimensional heat equation del 2 u over del x 2 plus del 2 u over del y 2 is equal to del u over del t. If we say is that from here this heat is heat flow is a steady state that means it is independent of time 
if it is independent of time that says del u over del t would be 0 and then this two dimensional heat equation would be changed into our Laplace equation. This is one of a particular importance. Let us so let us see this is what is this uh, elliptic equation because elliptic equation this Laplace equation is elliptic and from here the Cauchy problem does not is not well posed that is we may not get unique solution. So, how to how to find out the solution of this? Let us talk about this two dimensional Laplace equation. If it is on some reason that is it is defined on the some reason on the two dimensional x y on the some reason since the Cauchy problem is not well posed what we say is that boundary problems boundary value problems that is what the boundary what the kind of side conditions we can have after you posing the different side condition if it is on the some reason r if it is working then we can have different kind of pose different kind of boundary conditions and from those boundary conditions we do have we name them different problems one is that we could put one boundary condition as my u is given on the boundary of this reason that is c this is then it is called the Dirichlet problem if it is given that is because this Cauchy problem is not well posed what it says is that its normal derivative with respect to t may not uh, be uh, having the unique solution that says the other, other problem which will give me the solution that is called the Newman problem in which we do have that normal derivative u n is given on this boundary c or we may have mixed kind of problems in which on some part of the c the u is given and on the rest of the part of the c this u n is given. So, let us just talk about this Dirichlet problem that is we are talking about the boundary value problem with Laplace equation where boundary conditions are given for the u on the boundary of the reason. So, for simplicity let us take the first one that is directly from the uh, one dimensional heat equation if I am just changing it to two dimensional heat equation with initial uh, with the del u over del t as 0 uh, the steady state one. So, let us say the rectangular reason. So, I am just considering the Dirichlet problem in rectangular reason. So, this is the reason in which we are talking about this reason and the boundary conditions we are having is that is on the three sides of the boundary we are putting that is u is 0 and on the upper side of the boundary we do have that it is f x. So, let us pose the problem we do have del 2 u over del x 2 plus del 2 u over del y 2 is equal to 0 with boundary conditions that u 0 y is 0 u 0 y is 0 u a y is 0 and u x comma 0 is 0 and u x comma b is f x. Let us see how to solve it. We we'll just go by the separation of variable method that is using the product function f x and g y we do get del 2 u over del x 2 as uh, f double dash x g y del 2 u over del y 2 as f x times g double dash y. Now, substituting this in the given equation del 2 u over del x 2 plus del 2 u over del y 2 is equal to 0 and dividing it by f into g what we do get f double dash x upon f x is equal to minus g double dash y upon g y. Since, right left hand side is x and y right hand side is y if they has to be equal they must be constant. So, let us say that is constant is minus k what we are getting is 2 O d or ordinary differential equation one is f double dash plus k f is equal to 0 and another is g double dash minus k g is equal to 0. And here we do have the boundary conditions if we change we do get that f 0 is 0 and f a is 0 here the boundary condition we would be having is g 0 is 0. So, now we do have two boundary value problems which is on the uh, ordinary differential equations. For this boundary value problem we do know that the Eigen values and Eigen functions are that is Eigen values are n pi over a whole square and Eigen functions let us say the solution f n x is sin n pi x over a. Now, second uh, uh, ordinary differential equation is this one now if this is the Eigen values then this k we would be writing it as n pi square uh, n pi over a whole square times g. So, this is one for this the solution is actually a n e to the power n pi y upon a plus b n e to the power minus n pi y upon a. Now, if I put g is equal to 0 uh, g at 0 is 0 this give me 
a n plus b n is equal to 0 or b n is equal to minus a n. So, we do get the solution as a n times e to the power n pi y upon a minus e to the power minus n pi y upon a that says is in the hyperbolic function 2 a n sin hyperbolic n pi y upon a. So, what we have got the solution u n x comma y as a n star sin hyperbolic n pi y upon a into sin n pi x over a. This 2 a n I am writing as a n star. So, we do have seen that we this solution is satisfying the boundary conditions on the three sides. The solution we have got a n star sin hyperbolic n pi y upon a sin pi n pi x over a. This is satisfying the boundary conditions on the three sides. Now, let us see that is whether it would satisfy the boundary condition on the fourth side or not. Certainly, single solution we cannot find out this one. So, we use this superposition principle and let this solution u x y s summation n is running from 1 to infinity u n x comma y, where u n x comma y is this one. So, that says this. Now, we want to satisfy this boundary condition the last one that is u at x comma b is f x. So, u x comma b if I am just using this u n x y over here if I put uh, uh, our y is equal to b what I would be getting is a n star sin hyperbolic n pi y up n pi b upon a into sin n pi x over a is equal to f x. Now, from here if we do see what this says is that this bracket this coefficient a n star sin hyperbolic n pi b over a this must be actually the coefficient of Fourier sin series of f x. Now, f x is a function which is defined from 0 to a at this point. So, now we have to have odd expansion of this and the Fourier uh, expansion for the odd extension of f x from 0 to a to minus a to plus a. So, now we do have is a n star using that it just gives us 2 upon that is actually a n star times sin hyperbolic n pi b upon a should be 2 upon l 2 upon a. So, that whole thing I have taken this 2 upon a and sin hyperbolic n pi b upon a integral 0 to a f x sin n pi x over a d x using the Euler's formula for the Fourier coefficients of odd expansion of uh, Fourier expansion for this f x. So, we get the solution of this our boundary value problem on the where this boundary conditions we do have this one in the rectangular region as this one. So, now uh, this is what we have got Laplace equation with boundary conditions we have got. Now, if I take non homogeneous Laplace equation we do know that this is called Poisson equation del 2 u over del x 2 plus del 2 u over del y 2 is equal to f x y. How to go for the solution? Normally, we are having is this again we do know that this is elliptic equation again we do know because this is elliptic equation the Cauchy problem for such equation is not well posed that says is we have to choose the initial conditions or the side conditions in such a manner. So, that we do get some solutions unique solutions. Normal condition is that is whenever we are using non homogeneous equations we use homogeneous initial conditions or with homogeneous equations we use non homogeneous initial conditions. We do have is that many times homogeneous equations we do have that the solution is existing just now we have done this Laplace equation also that homogeneous equation and this boundary conditions we could say that we could treat as initial conditions as well also we could find out a solution. So, if uh, the problem is non homogeneous we can change it to the homogeneous one and take the particular solution of this non homogeneous one and add it up and find out the using the initial conditions we could find out the solution or we are having is homogeneous equation with non homogeneous initial conditions that already we have done. So, if we do have non homogeneous equation with non homogeneous uh, initial conditions we just go ahead with the homogeneous equation with non homogeneous initial conditions and then add up the solution of 
a particular solution of non homogeneous equation. So, in this Poisson equation also we can define the Dirichlet problem as well as the Newman problem. In the Dirichlet problem it says is that uh, this u should be initial condition should be g x for uh, the boundary and the Newman problem says is that we do have the normal derivative, normal derivative is defined on this one. So, either we take uh, uh, this uh, non homogeneous Poisson equation with g x and h x as 0 and uh, um, or we do have this here as 0 and then g x and h x are as such on all the cases as we have done in the uh, Laplace equation similar manner and in the uh, uh, this uh, wave equations we can do it in the Poisson equation as well. So, today we had learned the one dimensional wave equation in the non homogeneous one using homogeneous initial conditions then using non homogeneous initial conditions then to find out a boundary value problem using homogeneous initial conditions and so on. Then we have gone to the Laplace equation using the boundary conditions and we had learned about the Poisson equations as well. So, that is all in today's lecture. Thank you.